Hello, my name is Rachel and I'm here today to do a review of a book that I read. Uh, I was reading it in January, at the end of January and finished it at the start of February and it is The Good Immigrant. This is a collection of essays from people who are immigrants to the UK or their parents were immigrants to the UK, that sort of thing. And this is edited by Nikesh Shukla but has essays from lots of different people. There's 21 and these are people from all different walks of life. You've got Muslims, um, Buddhists, Hindu, there's Chinese people in here, um, black people, there's just like all different types of people and they just talk about their experience of being in the UK. And so that's kind of what this is about. It's a very very beautiful book. Um, I've got the hardback version of it um, and yeah it's just very very beautiful and I went into this a bit unsure because I thought it's going to be a very very sad book um, and sometimes it's like oh I'm not sure if I'm ready for to be that sad yet I'm not ready if like that's what I'm in for today but actually when I started reading it I found that although there was very 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 sad bits uh, within this and bits where you were so angry with especially for me I'm from the UK so there were parts of this where I was so angry at my own society and it sucked but there were also parts that make you happy and there's so much sarcasm in here and just oh my god the first story in here which I think was by Nikesh Shukla it just had me in absolute stitches like it's sad to read about but it's hilarious so his first essay is called namaste so the first essay in here is called namaste and nikesh talks about the cultural appropriation of um things that belong to certain religions or certain countries or certain like practices for different people of the world um so he talks about namaste being used um as this like cultural centering of people for like yoga and things like that and he just has this massive front about how like namaste means hello and he's like i wouldn't mind if it was something that really meant something but it just means hello and people say it to him because they think they're making this big point and he's like it's just hello so in here he talks about chai tea chai meaning tea so people just ordering tea tea he talks about um when people order naan bread and he sees naan bread on a menu naan means bread so people are ordering bread bread <laughs> all quite funny a lot of them are funny like the namaste the chai tea very funny um, but there were things that were kind of made me a bit angry. So one of those was his, one of his friends was a gay man who was playing Call of Duty. And he said he was appalled on playing the game to see that all the street signs were in Arabic, not Urdu. He talks about the effort put into making each follicle in each soldier's head stand out, into making their bootlaces bounce as they run. The millions spent developing this game and how at no point did anyone decide to google the language of Pakistan and it just shows like things that are important to people like why is it important to be able to see each follicle of hair but not to get the language of the country right like that is the most important thing um so I really enjoyed his essay I'm not going to go into like an a massive amount of detail about each essay because that would take forever but um I just wanted to mention that one because I really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm looking at it there's so many funny things in here um I think Vera Chocks was quite good that might be the one I'm thinking of but I'm not sure she might be the one who was just talking about Chinese people in society yeah this is it so she talks about um how in order to be attractive to men of any colour we are expected to be small and pliable i know there is an alternative stereotype the cold automaton dominatrix femme fatale asian woman but we don't seem to be male ordering as many of them lot and it's just sad that like because i know what she means 
um, and I think that does happen a lot and it's really sad that that does happen and that there is this sort of stereotype of how an Asian woman should be and it's different from the stereotypes that are put on women um, say of my country or women from America or women from France, things like that. It's very, very different from the sort of stereotypes and stuff that people put on women from places like China or Japan or like things like that. It's very, very different. So I found that quite interesting. One I also found very sad was Riz Ahmed's discussion. So he talked about um, auditions he went for and going to the airport. And he talked about how he is continually stopped at the airport. Even And he said that he goes to the airport all the time because he works, uh, like he films abroad and stuff like that. So he goes to the airport a lot. And at one point he was going like every month he would be coming in and out of the airport and he would get stopped every time and checked. And the people at airport security knew him because they knew they always checked him and they were like, sorry mate, like, we've got to pull you. Um, and it's just so sad that that happened. And I, like, it was just infuriating to read that. Um, and I think the other story that was quite sad was the last one. Musa Okwonga, and it's called The Ungrateful Country. And I just, I found that I completely understood what the writer was on about and I completely understood why he made the decision he made at the end of the essay, but it made me so sad that somebody had to decide to do that because of the country I am from, because of the way they are treated by the people in the country that I live in. It, it was just, it was very, very sad. Um, and I think it was good that it ended on that note. I think it ended on the perfect way to make people think, oh my God, what are we doing? How are we like letting this happen? How are we letting people be treated like this? And so I liked the end. I liked that it, it kind of, made you really step back and think about what was going on um so yeah there isn't an essay in here that I didn't like there was one essay in here that I found very difficult to uh, understand and I had to really look into what it was oh the wife of a terrorist was really good by Miss L I really enjoyed that um that was infuriating as well I think it was Perpetuating Casteism by Sarah Sahin. That was the one that I found quite difficult to read um, in terms of what she was talking about. I hadn't really heard about before. Um, and yeah, that's the only one that I'd say is a bit of a difficult read. You might have to look up a few things that she talks about during the essay to um, really understand what she's getting at. This is very, very uh, readable. Uh, every essay in here is articular and most of them are funny, funny in the way that I like. Um, my favourite kind of comedy is like sarcasm and dark humour and I feel like a lot of this was that. I feel like instead of being super sad and being really angry, um, a lot of the writers in here took that sadness and anger and turned it into a dark humour so that they were definitely getting the point across but not in a way that was that made you not want to pick it up um for instance I've been reading the um another day in the death of America and that's very sad and oh, obviously it would be but it makes it hard to uh pick it up I'm very much taking my time with it because it's so sad that sometimes I just can't pick it up, I just can't face being that sad at that time. Whereas this was never like that. I read this very fast, um, especially because it's non-fiction. I do not read non-fiction fast. I just, it takes me at least a month to read a non-fiction book. 
and this I read in two weeks I think which is amazing for me um nothing against non-fiction it's just I grew up reading fiction and I didn't like non-fiction when I was growing up and I am like just trying to breach into it now and sort of start reading non-fiction so yeah because I've not really read much before it is a bit difficult but I'm really really enjoying it and this has definitely made me want to read more so yeah I give this five out of five stars absolutely adored it would definitely recommend for anyone not anyone of who likes a certain thing just anyone and everyone should read this because it is thoroughly important uh so yeah that was my review of The Good Immigrant. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!